This has to be the closest thing that we've seen to a tinnitus cure ever. Hey guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and co-founder of Modern Tinnitus in Scottsdale, Arizona. And in this video, I'm talking about the new TENT A3 clinical trials that just took us one step closer to finding a cure for tinnitus. As the largest channel on YouTube talking about hearing loss and tinnitus, I am fortunate to receive a ton of comments and questions from my viewers. And right after wanting to know what the best hearing aids are, the next thing you guys are looking for is what the best tinnitus treatments are. Now, I will be the first to admit that the internet is loaded with a bunch of bogus miracle cures for tinnitus, including tinnitus gummies, tinnitus supplements, tinnitus eardrops, tinnitus light therapy, and even things like spoon tapping, where you literally tap on your head with spoons, a method that is actually promoted by so-called doctors. And there is one thing that all of these tinnitus cures have in common, and that is that none of them are backed by research to support their claims. Now, that doesn't mean that there are not different tinnitus treatments that are actually effective in reducing your perception and annoyance of your tinnitus. After all, there is research to support the use of hearing aids to treat your tinnitus, as well as tinnitus retraining therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, and a bunch of different lifestyle modifications that can significantly reduce the negative impact of your tinnitus. But there is one new form of tinnitus treatment that is gaining a lot of traction because there is a lot of research starting to support its use to reduce the perception of your tinnitus, and that new treatment method is called by bimodal neuromodulation. Bimodal neuromodulation is a treatment where you stimulate two sensory pathways at the same time. In this case, the auditory pathway through the ears and the somatosensory pathway through the tongue using a tongue tip stimulator. This new form of tinnitus treatment has been identified to reduce your brain's attention and sensitivity to your tinnitus. And recently, a new form of bimodal neuromodulation using the linear tinnitus treatment device developed by Neuromod obtained FDA de novo approval in the United States following their TENT A3 clinical trial. And since I know that there is a lot of skepticism out there among individuals with tinnitus, myself included, because we've all been given false promises before, I decided to take a deep dive into this clinical research to see if the linear tinnitus treatment device is really all it's cracked up to be. But before I do me a huge favor and click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, go ahead and do that as well. It's greatly appreciated. And let me know down in the comment section if you have ever attempted to treat your tinnitus and how well that went. The Linear Tinnitus Treatment Device was granted de novo approval from the FDA back in March of 2023. They were able to achieve this very difficult to earn status thanks to their new TENT A3 clinical trial results, which supported the results that they saw in their TENT A1 and TENT A2 clinical trials. So let's take a deeper look at the research published in the Nature Communications peer-reviewed journal to see just how effective bimodal neuromodulation using Lanier actually is. This study consisted of two six-week periods. The first six-week period was with sound-only stimulation, and the second six-week period was with bimodal treatment, including sound stimulation and tongue tip stimulation. There were 112 total participants, 77 of them being male and 35 of them being female. All of them served as their own control in this single arm controlled pivotal trial that was recommended by the FDA. The primary endpoint result that was measured at the end of the study to determine if this treatment was effective compared the responder rate observed in stage two, which is the bimodal treatment, versus stage one, which was the sound only treatment, where the responder had to show seven points of improvement or higher on the tinnitus handicap inventory. The secondary endpoint result that was measured was a 13-point improvement or higher on the tinnitus functional index to see if this supported the primary endpoint result. Okay, if that doesn't make sense yet, just bear with me because eventually it will. Now, before I get into the results, I want to discuss a few things about this study first. First, let me address the decision to use a single arm controlled pivotal trial versus using a double blind randomized controlled trial. Now, if you remember high school like I do, because let's be honest, it really wasn't that long ago, when we were in science class, we learned that the gold standard when you're doing a research study is to have a double blind randomized controlled trial with a placebo. This way, neither the researchers nor the individuals receiving the treatment know if they're actually getting the treatment or if they're getting a placebo, and then you can actually measure whether or not they responded to what the treatment was. This prevents bias, and it's probably one of the best ways of preventing bias in a research study. 
However, there are certain types of treatments that you cannot double blind for and bimodal neuromodulation is clearly one of them. This is because it is impossible to trick someone into believing that they're receiving sound stimulation and tongue tip stimulation without actually giving them the stimulation. It's not like just giving someone a pill and they don't know whether they're getting a sugar pill or getting an actual treatment pill when they take it. So the best way to identify whether or not bimodal neuromodulation actually works is to split up the treatment into two six week periods where during the first six weeks, they're only getting auditory stimulation through their ears and during the second six weeks, they're getting both auditory stimulation and tongue tip stimulation. Now, with that being said, it is much harder to prove that you're getting additional benefit from the second phase of the treatment because a lot of people could potentially get a bunch of improvement already from the first phase. It just means that the effect from the second phase has to be that much greater. So while some people believe that the TENT A3 trial lacked any controls for bias, that's not actually true. They just did not use the double blind randomized control trial. And just in case you're one of those individuals who is still skeptical about the potential bias of this single arm control, just know that this is also utilized for a lot of different cancer treatments, very serious conditions and very rare conditions that they're looking for treatments for. Second, let's go ahead and discuss the primary endpoint of this study and the secondary endpoint of this study. The primary endpoint of this study was to see if there was a significant improvement in the tinnitus handicap inventory of these participants that means that there was at least a seven point improvement or more in their THI. And just to be clear, this means that they had an additional seven points or more of improvement in addition to just using the auditory stimulation alone. Which means that even if someone saw a 14 point improvement using sound only therapy in phase one, they would need to see an additional seven points of improvement in their THI during phase two, which would be a total of 21 points or more of improvement on the THI. The same is true for the secondary endpoint of this study, which was looking at the tinnitus functional index, otherwise abbreviated TFI, that needed to see at least a 13 point improvement or higher to show that there was an improvement on that scale. So what were the results of this study and how did this TENT A3 clinical trial lead to de novo approval from the FDA of this linear tinnitus treatment device for an entirely new category of tinnitus treatment? Well, of the 112 participants, 93% of them completed the 12-week clinical trial. Of the individuals who did complete the clinical trial, 70.5% of the participants with moderate or worse tinnitus saw a clinically meaningful reduction in their tinnitus when sound therapy alone provided no clinically meaningful benefit. Not to mention, the majority of participants who did experience benefit using Lanier's sound-only treatment in the first six weeks saw additional benefit from the the use of tongue stimulation in the second six weeks. And even though not every participant received a clinically significant improvement in their tinnitus, 88.6% of the participants would recommend bimodal neuromodulation with Lanier to treat tinnitus. More importantly, zero of the participants had any device-related serious adverse side effects from using the Lanier tinnitus treatment device. Okay, so I know that this sounds really exciting, but let's take a deeper look at this data. First and foremost, the improvements that were seen using Lanier in this clinical trial were for individuals with moderate or worse tinnitus, which means that their tinnitus handicap inventory was at least a 38 or higher to start. Individuals with a THI score of 37 or below did not even meet the inclusion criteria for this study because the amount of improvement they would potentially see was much more limited. And these participants had to have a hearing loss that was no worse than 40 decibels anywhere between 250 hertz and 1000 hertz and 80 decibels anywhere between 2000 hertz and 8000 hertz. As you already know, the primary endpoint that they were looking for in this study was using the tinnitus handicap inventory and they needed to see a seven point improvement or higher. After stage one, which was sound only treatment, 63.3% of the participants saw a significant improvement in their tinnitus. The remaining 36.7% of participants did not see at least a seven point improvement on their THI score. After stage two, using bimodal neuromodulation, which included the tongue tip stimulator and auditory stimulation, 43.3% of those participants also saw additional benefit 
it in their tinnitus, meaning that they had at least seven points or higher improvement in their THI score in addition to just the sound-only therapy from stage one. For the secondary endpoint using the tinnitus functional index that required an improvement of 13 points or higher, 45.5% of participants saw improvement using bimodal neuromodulation. And this is versus only 29.6% of participants who saw benefit using sound-only therapy in stage one. Now there is some concern out there among linear tinnitus treatment device users that actually using this treatment would spike their tinnitus. So let's go ahead and talk about that really quick. So during the first six weeks of this trial using sound only therapy, there were 44 device related adverse events, 42 of them being mild and two of them being moderate. However, during the second six weeks using bimodal neuromodulation, there were only 18 device related adverse events and all of those were mild. Overall, 96.8% of device-related adverse events from this study were mild, and all of them have been resolved from the study. Ultimately, these results led the FDA to grant de novo approval to the linear tinnitus treatment device for the treatment of tinnitus because it is extremely safe and it's very effective. But what are my thoughts after reading through this entire TENS A3 clinical trial? Well, I have a few of them. First, it was really nice to see that this clinical trial was heavily scrutinized by the FDA here in the United States. And I also like seeing that the results of this clinical trial were similar to the results that we saw with the TENS A1 and TENS A2 clinical trials. Second, I'm glad to see that bimodal neuromodulation used by the linear tinnitus treatment device is safe. And while you might see a few spikes in your tinnitus during your treatment journey. Typically, those are rather mild and they resolve themselves. Third, the benefit from using bimodal neuromodulation to treat your tinnitus, despite what you may read in the tinnitus forums online, is one of the most effective forms of tinnitus treatment that we have seen since hearing aids. And this is extremely exciting because there are rather limited options when it comes to treating your tinnitus, especially ones that are backed by research. Fourth, I've come to realize that just like any other medical treatment that exists on this planet, linear bimodal neuromodulation will not work for everybody. Specifically, if you have mild bothersome tinnitus with a THI score of 37 or below, like me. But honestly, even if they would have shown a 100% treatment success rate and gained de novo approval from the FDA, I probably wouldn't have believed those results anyway. And fifth, expect bimodal neuromodulation to be one of the most popular forms of tinnitus treatment over the course of the next decade plus. I even expect to see other devices that use bimodal neuromodulation, like the Michigan Tinnitus device developed by Dr. Susan Shore, to be extremely popular as well whenever that hits the market. Just remember, there is no silver bullet when it comes to successfully treating your tinnitus, including bimodal neuromodulation. In fact, when you're looking for a clinic to treat your tinnitus, you want to make sure that they do not use a one-size-fits-all approach and just fit you with hearing aids and call it a day. That's why I partnered with Dr. Craig Casper, one of the world's leading experts in tinnitus care, to launch our flagship Modern Tinnitus Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona. At Modern Tinnitus, we are pioneering a new method of tinnitus treatment. Our best practice holistic approach to tinnitus care combines personalized treatment plans with cutting-edge technology like Linear and never-before-utilized biomarker tracking. Not only does biomarker tracking give us objective insight into what tinnitus treatments are working best for you, but over time we will be able to use that data to refine your treatment plan. No two cases of tinnitus are the same, so if you have tinnitus and you're looking for a science-based, best-practice approach to tinnitus care designed specifically for you, check out my ModernTinnitus.co to learn more. At the end of the day, not only does the TENS A3 clinical trial results and the FDA de novo approval make bimodal neuromodulation one of the most effective forms of tinnitus treatments supported by research, but it also shows that there is a huge desire to find a cure for tinnitus that is being led by companies like Neuromod. And if you want to remain a skeptic after hearing what I just told you, then that's totally up to you. As for me, I'm going to rely on research to guide my decisions on which treatments are effective for tinnitus and which treatments are more like snake oil. So what's next? 
Well, based on my interview with Dr. Hubert Lim, the chief science officer at Neuromod, it sounds like refining the auditory and somatosensory stimulation based on unique tinnitus characteristics is something that they're looking into. Until that time, if you have moderate or worse tinnitus and you're looking for a treatment option that doesn't involve you tapping spoons on your head, you may want to take the recommendation of 89% of the participants inside of this study and give the Lanier tinnitus treatment device a try.